So the first question is, if the Bible is the supreme authority uh, and it's sufficient, why do we need to attend church, be members of a church? Um, what do we get from church that we don't no. get just by from Scripture? Right. Um, well, it, it's uh, we're, we're, the Apostle Paul tells us in Romans 10 that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of Christ. And so he says, uh, then how shall they hear unless there is a preacher and how shall they preach unless they're sent? So it's it, there. It's not just the reading. It's not just scripture itself. It's primarily the preaching of scripture. The, the written scriptures uh, keep us as preachers within the realm of what we're allowed to preach. Scripturile scrise ne ne țin un cadru. But the preached word is the word of God. Measured by the inerrant written scriptures. So we, we have a, a much... Um, the, the proper teaching, reading, and preaching of scripture occurs in the communion of saints, in the church. See, we don't, we, we're not getting rid of the scriptures, we're simply saying, within the church, what is the final court of appeals? It's not that you have to choose between the church or the Bible. So what could you tell us about the sacrament of penance? As, uh, as experienced by Luther before mm. the Reformation started? Oh, that's a big question. Um, well, he was terrified by it. <laughs> because he took it more seriously than most people did. This was not a, a, a priest who was looking for a way to be uh, lascivious. He, was, uh, he, he would wear out confessors. He would get out of the confessional and, and then 15 minutes later a, a monk would see him going back in the, in the door to another confessional booth. So, well, if I sin, I have to confess. God is perfect and holy. And I'm not. And so if I sin, I have to confess it. And, and so the, 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 the really amazing thing for, for Luther was that nothing we do completes the redemption that is acquired for us by Jesus Christ. Christ doesn't come most of the way. And then you have this to do in order to wipe that sin off of your, your credit. But he paid, he paid it all. He covered everything. And so there, the, the absolution, what happened in Lutheran and Reformed churches was that confession and absolution moved out of the confession, the private confessional 
into the public worship service. Ce s-a întâmplat atât în bisericile luterane cât și cele reformate este că această spovedire, această, acest sacrament al, al penitenței s-a mutat, această practică, din, dintr-o spovedire privată în acest confesional, în cadrul public al închinării a liturghiei bisericii. The public confession of sin and then the minister in Christ's name saying, I declare uh, to all of you uh, who look to Christ by faith that your sins are forgiven. Atât în bisericile luterane cât și reformate există o mărturisire comună a păcatelor și apoi slujitorul uh, declară în mod solemn oamenilor care și-au mărturisit păcatele prin autoritatea lui Hristos. Dacă și-au mărturisit păcatele și crede în Hristos, uh, păcatele sunt iertate. But you, then you still have a place for church discipline for those who are, who are, are uh, living outside of the bounds of doctrine, biblical doctrine and practice. Și pe lângă acest lucru mai este loc și de disciplina bisericii pentru disciplinarea celor ce trăiesc în afara cadrului biblic în ce crește credința și trăirea. And ultimately that can lead to excommunication. Și acel lucru poate să ducă în cel mai rău caz la excomunicare. But it's different from uh, so you, you have all of the biblical parts of penance. Deci există aspecte uh, biblice din ce se făcea atunci în sacramentul penitenței. Repentance and forgiveness. Pocăință, iertare. And church discipline. Disciplinare. Uh, without uh, threatening the sufficiency of Christ. Dar putem să avem aceste lucruri fără să renunțăm la suficiența lui Hristos. Următoarea întrebare este dacă și unde au folosit reformatorii, părinții bisericii în a argumenta pentru sola Scriptura. So, while arguing for the sufficiency of Scriptures, could you provide some examples of reformers alluding to the Church Fathers to back this up? Did the, the reformers... Yes, the fathers? definitely. Um, in fact, I'll just give a, a few examples. Uh, Luther was well versed in the in the the church fathers but he was uh more familiar with the western fathers Anselm Augustine Luther era uh, era familiar cu părinții bisericii îi cunoște le cunoștea scrierile dar era familiar în special cu părinții din uh, biserica apostolică uh, Calvin was was interestingly he was he was drawn uh, he was also all of that is true of Calvin but he was also wider in his interest in the church fathers and, and liked quite a number of the eastern church fathers. In mod special in plus pentru pentru Calvin, el avea un interes mai larg în ce privește părinții bisericii și era foarte interesat chiar și de de părinții din biserica răsăriteană. He especially uh, thought that that uh, uh, John Chrysostom was the greatest preacher who had ever lived. Calvin a spus că Sfântul Ioan Gură de Aur a fost cel mai mare predicator care a trăit vreodată. And, and his doctrine of the Lord's Supper is very much influenced by uh, these, these uh, eastern, more than western trends. Și uh, doctrina lui Calvin asupra cei Domnului este foarte mult influențată de acești părinți răsăritene în bisericii. Uh, when it comes to sola scriptura, yeah, all of the reformers uh, immediately set about to going back to the church fathers because they said, actually, that's where we, as monks and priests and students, began to get excited about sola scriptura was by reading the church fathers. Reformatorii au folosit și începește sola scriptura au folosit pentru părinți, pe părinți bisericii, pentru că Uh, în, vre- în timpul în care ei erau înainte de reformă, preoți, călugări, învățători ai bisericii, au descoperit sola scriptură, au descoperit această doctrină citind părinții bisericii. So we love tradition. Dacă ne, ne place <laughs> foarte mult tradiția. Uh, we, we, we love the tradition that says that, that tradition is important, but scripture is our final authority. Îmi place tradiția care spune că tradiția e importantă, dar Scriptura este autoritatea finală. Totul întrebare este, care este relația dintre sola Scriptura și interpretare? The next, next question is, 
what's the relationship between swastura and interpretation of scripture? I'm really glad for that question. Um, it, it, here's the thing. Uh, yes, there is a difference between the courts and the Constitution. You're going to need the, the courts because you're, you, you have to apply, interpret and apply the Constitution. So you can't just say, well, it's a free-for-all, you know, take whatever you want out of the Bible. You're not accountable to each other, about, to the whole church about how you interpret things. And not, we say this in our, in our uh, uh, confessions, not everything in Scripture is equally clear. Uh, and so we need, we need teachers, and we also, as, as even those who aren't uh, official ministers and teachers, we need to know the Scriptures well enough to know when the Scriptures are being handled rightly. And that's why the Reformation really raised the bar and really created, contributed more than anything else to literacy in, in the Western world. Și acesta este unul dintre motivele pentru care reforma a ridicat foarte mult standardul de educație al oamenilor și a contribuit foarte mult la îndepărtarea analfabetismului din Europa. They, they wrote catechisms and, and they said everyone from a small child up needs to know what they believe and why they believe it. Au, au scris catehisme și au insistat că fiecare membru al bisericii de la cel mai mic până la cel mai mare And here's the, here's the question that I ask my, my Roman Catholic and Orthodox friends. Yes, it is. The, it, it's true. It is a complicated thing to, it's one thing to say Scripture is our only authority. It's another thing to interpret it carefully. E o distinție între a spune Scriptura, e singura noastră autoritate, e autoritatea supremă, și a interpreta corect Scriptura. But here's my question. Este o întrebare. How easy is, is it to interpret tradition? Cât de ușor este să interpretezi tradiția? Uh, the Roman Catholic Church uh, uh, decreed that uh, You, you have, it's the doctrine of implicit faith. You can't possibly know everything that the church teaches, so you just implicitly believe that the church knows what it teaches. Uh, tot ceea ce biserica cunoaște. And so you believe that what the church believes. Pur și simplu crezi ce crede biserica. But then, then, then the question is, but what does the church believe? Apoi întrebarea este, ce crede biserica? Does my faith need to actually be informed, be, have an object other than the church knowing what she's talking about? Trebuie ca credința mea să fie informată, să aibă un obiect So, you know, and then you, you look at, for instance, uh, Gregory, Gregory the Great. Um, Gregory the Great in the 5th century said uh, uh, there, was, there was someone who came up to him, a, a bishop who came up to him and said, Uh, he addressed him as the uh, universal pontiff. And Gregory tells us uh, what he said to, to this bishop. 
I have forbidden such proud address. Am interzis o astfel de adresare cu mândrie. And I tell you now that whoever uses that title for himself or for someone else in his arrogance is a precursor to Antichrist. Now either Gregory the Great, one of the greatest popes who ever lived, either Gregory the Great was right or the council that centuries later gave the title universal pontiff to the pope is right but you can't have both of them right deci în această dilema a tradiției fie Grigore fie uh, Grigore cel Mare care a fost papă în secolul 5 are dreptate fie uh, conciliu ce sute de ani mai târziu i-a atribuit papei acest titlu are dreptate nu, nu se pot reconcilia cele două The ancient church fathers in both the East and the West, I'll use another example, didn't allow any rep- representations of the Godhead, including Jesus Christ. In primele secole din Antichitate, părinții bisericii nu au permis reprezentări ale lui Dumnezeu, nici uh, ale uh, lui Hristos. So Lactantius, for example, said in the third century, uh, an Eastern church father said that uh, any church that has any pictures of Jesus or, or any, uh, anything in heaven uh, in the church is a pagan temple. Irenaeus said the Gnostics were the first to bring pictures into the church. The Council of Elvira condemned by the emperor held by the emperor called by the emperor uh, uh, an ecum- considered an ecumenical council condemned i believe it's still considered well i could be corrected by that uh uh any uh one who knows better can correct me on that but anyway it, it was at the time considered uh a true uh council of the church condemned uh all icons and statues. Conciliul de la Elvira, care pe acea vreme era acceptat de biserică, a condamnat uh, toate imaginele și uh, statuile din biserică. And a century later, that view was condemned as heretical. Și după 100 de ani mai târziu, acea perspectivă a fost condamnată ca fiind eretic. I'm not trying to be, you know, uh, um, cheeky about this. Uh, încerc să, uh, să exagerez uh, aceste I'm just trying to say it, interpretation is difficult whether you're interpreting the Bible or tradition. To think that you, you, you have it easier if you go from interpreting the Bible to interpreting tradition, I think is really not to know much church history. So the next question is, uh, when did the church, when did the fathers uh, move away from Uh, scripture alone to giving authority to uh, tradition. Yeah, I, this is the, this would um, this. First of all, there would be be lots of disagreement um, uh, among scholars about uh, how to answer this question on both sides of the uh, of the aisle here. It's not like there was a, a, a flashpoint, this one moment where it happened, especially in the East, whereas in the West you have the Reformation where, where things were defined that had not quite been defined before. Nu există un moment în care se întâmplă lucrul acesta, în special în răsărit și în apus, unde a avut loc reforma. For example, in... Um, Uh, uh, up until the Council of Trent, which condemned the Reformation doctrines. 
Deci în, în Biserica Apuseană, până la Conciliul din Trento, care a condamnat doctrina reformei, you could hold to sola scriptura. Puteai să susții sola scriptura. Thomas Aquinas held to sola scriptura. Thomas Aquino a susținut această doctrină. Uh, John... Uh, uh, Dun Scotus held to. So m- many of the, the great leaders said that Scripture is the sole supreme authority in matters of faith and practice. After the Council of Trent, that view held by Thomas Aquinas would be considered heretical. După Conciliul din Trento, această perspectivă susținută chiar și de Thomas Aquino este considerată eretică. So you have a watershed there with the Reformation and the Council of Trent in particular where it condemned for the first time it had allowed lots of diversity and we would say as reformed Christians it was Rome that got off the path but they allowed basically you know many different views not after the Council of Trent. After the Council of Trent, they said, this path that we've taken is the only path that can be. Până la Conciliul din Trent, exista libertate în biserică pentru mai multe perspective, dar la Conciliul din Trent, Roma, papalitatea, a impus o singură perspectivă și nu a mai tolerat alte perspective decât perspectiva susținută de ei atunci. Următoarea întrebare este, ce înseamnă distinție calitativă între învățătura lui Iisus și învățătura și cea a altor anumitașilor? Uh, so next question is, what does uh, the qualitative distinction mean? What does it mean to have a qualitative distinction between one teaching and another? Oh, the extraordinary and ordinary yeah, what periods does, of like, the qualitative church? qualitative distinction mean? Yes. Okay. That, well, it means that, that the shift from the apostolic era to the post-apostolic era isn't, isn't like a uh, dimmer light, but an off and on switch. Diferența calitativă se referă la faptul că trecerea de la epoca apostolică la epoca de după nu este... Diferența nu este de cantitate, ca și atunci când cu luminile acestea, de exemplu, se pot da mai, un pic mai tare, mai, mai, mai încet, ci este ca uh, diferența pe care o avem atunci când pur și simplu aprindem un, uh, un bec, un întrerupător care fie aprinde ceva, fie... În 1 Corinthians, Paul says that it's like the, the difference between laying concrete and building on top of it. Deci, o diferență pe care o vedem explicată de Pavel cu ilustrația, că e diferența între a, a, pune o, a face o temelie și după aceea a construi pe această temelie. He says, no one can lay a foundation other than the one that has been laid. Și ce spune Pavel la colegi, că nimeni nu poate să pună altă temelie decât cea care a fost pusă. And so he's not saying that, that the foundation kept being laid for centuries afterward. Deci nu zice că secole de rândul după aceea o să se tot facă acea temelie. Much less that it is still being laid even down to the present day. Nu că ar fi încă și acum zidit acea temelie. But that it, it's, it's over, it's done. That, that canon is closed. Acea temelie a fost deja construită, acel canon este complet, este închis. There are no prophets, there are no apostles. Nu mai sunt profeți, nu mai sunt uh, apostoli. But we have the apostolic faith in scripture. Dar avem credința apostolică în scriptură. And the preaching and teaching and administration of the sacraments and discipline consistent with that is where the church is. Și uh, predicarea, învățarea, administrarea sacramentelor, disciplina bisericii care este făcută conform cu învățătura apostolică ne arată locul în care găsim biserica. Întreba întrebarea, um, cum răspundeți acuzelor că interpretarea Scripturii de către reformați este prin ochii filozofiei din secolul al XVI-lea și nu prin ochii iudeului din primul secol? So, how do you respond to the accusation that uh, 
the way the reformers interpreted scripture is based on 16th century philosophy and not based on the Jewish viewpoint of the first century. Hmm. Well, first of all, I mean, this is get, it, above my pay grade, as they say, but um, I would say, first of all, the, the idea that uh, you have a culture in the first century that's Jewish and then eventually it becomes Hellenized and uh, Greek thought begins to, to settle in doesn't actually fit with what we now know about Palestine in the first century. Ideea aceasta că inițial creștinismul a fost bazat pe o cultură evreiască și după aceea de-a lungul timpului a fost grecizat și s-a îndepărtat de, de ce era, nu mai este în conformitate cu ce am descoperit și cunoaștem acum despre Palestina din primul secol. You could find Plato and Aristotle in the library in Jerusalem. În, în, în biblioteca din Ierusalim era și Platon și Aristotel. Otherwise, you know, th just think of the fact that Paul in Athens is able to quote from memory three separate uh, Greek uh, poet philosophers. Pavel, un evreu, acolo în Atena, poate să citeze uh, trei uh, scritori uh, păgâni diferiți din minte. And in, in his letters, too, he often alludes to Stoic political philosophy. Și în scrisorile sale face de multe ori referință la perspectivele politice ale stoicilor. It's impossible for anyone in any period of time to not be influenced philosophically and culturally by, the, by our day. Este imposibil pentru cineva în orice epocă ar trăi să nu fie influențat de cultura sau filozofia în care trăiește. So I, I may, I may uh, have difficulties with some of um, the, the more uh, extreme stoicism and asceticism in some of the church fathers. But the, uh, uh, you're never going to find a period in church history, including our own, where people can't say centuries after us, look at all that they were influenced by in their secular culture. Dar nu există, nu poți să trăiești într-o epocă și sute de ani mai târziu oamenii să nu privească înapoi la, la epoca ta și să spună, uite, oamenii aceia au fost influențați de cultura și filozofia lor. So I think we have to be critical about influences deci cred că trebuie să abordăm mult critic aceste influențe and be willing to say, look, Plato and, and Christ clash at this point. Și să vedem care sunt locurile în care Platon și Hristos se ciocnesc, nu pot fi reconciliați. Like the resurrection of the body. Exemplu, vierea trupului. And that's what the church fathers did. They, they, when push came to shove, Jesus wins. Și când au fost puși în situația aceasta și părinții bisericii au observat această tensiune și au, uh, au, și au întors privirea înspre Hristos. And you look at the time of the Reformation that Martin Luther and John Calvin couldn't be closer in many of their doctrines. Și dacă ne uităm la vremea reformei, Martin Luther și Jean Calvin nu putea să nu puteau, erau foarte apropiați în foarte multe doctrine. But where they were different, they were really different. Dar acolo unde existau diferențe, chiar erau diferențe. And that was in part due to philosophical influences. Și acele diferențe erau datorate anumitor influențe filozofice. If anybody's interested, Calvin was more of a Platonist. Luther was more of a nominalist. Yeah. So, were they influenced by philosophy? Oh, yeah, we can look back and say, oh, you could definitely see the, uh, the influence of Platonism here with that remark of Calvin's, or that, the influence of nominalism on uh, William of Ockham on, on Martin Luther here. But that doesn't, the, the question is what they're saying, not how they're saying it. 
Și acum privind în urmă, putem să zicem, a, afirmația lui Calvin a fost influențată de un limbaj platonist sau ce a spus Luther, influențată de William of Ockham, dar ce contează cel mai mult nu este neapărat modul în care vorbesc și limbajul pe care îl folosesc, ci ce spun ei, doctrina pe care o susțin. And so we've got to give each other that kind of, that kind of respect as well. Și trebuie să ne acordăm și unii altora acest respect. It's not just what we say, it's not just how we're saying things. We have to, we have to be, be charitable and ask, well, what are they really trying to say? Atunci când vedem că cineva spune ceva ce nu suntem de acord, trebuie să trecem dincolo de forma a ceea ce este spus înspre a descoperi intenția, ce încearcă acei oameni să spună. Because at the end of the day, you can't really separate what we're trying to say from how we're saying it. Până la urmă, nu putem să separăm uh, ce încercăm să spunem de modul în care Because we're cultural, philosophical creatures. Suntem uh, creaturi, persoane uh, culturale și filozofice. Am vrut întrebare. Cum putem răspunde cuiva care spune că are un cuvânt profetic? The next, next question is, how can we answer someone who claims they have a, a prophetical utterance from the Lord. Mm. Well, I would say that whether it's popes um, or it's uh, contem- pe- pe- people who believe they're contemporary prophets, it's the same answer. The qualitative distinction between the foundation laying era of the church and the building era. We're living in, in the building era side of things. And so it, I, I just go back to the same passages uh, that the, the reformers did in, in their day and that the church fathers did in their day, uh, where you, you have a, 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 not just a, a difference in degree of inspiration, but a difference between the Spirit's inspiration of these texts and the illumination of, by the Spirit of the church. Uh, trebuie să mergem înspre textul Scripturii și să facem această distinție pe care au făcut-o și reformatorii în vremea lor, o distinție care nu e una de grad între mai multă inspirație în epoca apostolică și mai puțină după aceea, e vorba de diferență de cantitate și grad, ci este diferența între un text care este inspirat și oameni care sunt iluminați ca să înțeleagă acel text. And that's why I think Paul says, don't go beyond what is written, for that will only puff people up and cause division. De aceea și Apostolul Pavel învață Biserica să nu meargă dincolo de ceea ce este scris, pentru că asta va duce la, la mândrie și dezbinare. So, I personally want more of the Spirit's illumination. <laughs> deci, personal, își dorește mai multă iluminare a Duhului Sfânt. I want to understand His Word better. I want to understand my own heart better and, and, be able, and be able to live in the light of God's truth. But the Holy Spirit isn't inspiring me or my utterances today. I can resist the Spirit. I can fall into sin, either doctrinal error or personal sin and pride. But the scriptures were preserved from error by the Holy Spirit. And what's true of me individually and you individually is true of the church as a whole. Ceea ce este adevărat cu privire la fiecare dintre noi, individual, este adevărat și cu privire la biserică. The church not only can mistakes, the church does make mistakes and the church is prone to making mistakes. Biserica nu doar că poate să facă greșeli, dar 
chiar face greșeli și este predispusă să facă greșeli. That's why we uh, have so many meetings. <laughs> that's why that's why pastors and elders are often commiserating with each other trying to solve difficulties in their churches. Um, you're just trying to trying to uh, understand God's word better because you know you're not inspired Your answer isn't the final answer. You're trying to understand the word that is. Încercăm să înțelegem care este uh, cuvântul lui Dumnezeu, pentru că știm că noi și răspunsurile noastre, ideile noastre nu sunt inspirate, de aceea trebuie să uh, descoperim tot mai, mai uh, în profunzime care este adevărul lui cuvântul lui Dumnezeu. Uh, just a, a few more questions. Uh, următoarea întrebare, ce face Biblia să fie așa specială de ce să o credem? What, what makes the Bible so special? Why should we believe and follow the Bible? I love that question. Uh, Jesus rose from the dead. Uh, no, no one, uh, you know, Muhammad never claimed to be God incarnate. Muhammad nu a susținut că este Dumnezeu întrupat. He certainly didn't claim to die for our sins. Or be raised on the third day. Uh, you, you know, there's no resurrection of Buddha celebrated annually. And if we had more time, we could talk about the evidence for the resurrection of Jesus. Um, this is not something that happened in my heart, and you know, I know how, uh, you know, uh, I'll tell you how I know he lives, he lives within my heart. This is about Jesus in history 2,000 years ago, walking the same terra firma and being raised in the same history of Alexander the Great. Și vorba de Hristos, care acum 2000 de ani în istorie, umblând pe pământul nostru, în acea, aceeași istorie a lui Alexandru cel Mare. And Jesus said that the whole Old Testament is the Word of God. Și Iisus a spus că întreg Vechiul Testament este Cuvântul lui Dumnezeu. In fact, when he quotes it, he says, as God says, as the Word of God says. Atunci când citează, introduce citatele, spunând, după cum zice Dumnezeu, după cum zice cuvântul lui Dumnezeu. It is written is the highest court of appeals. Este scris, este instanța supremă. So even with the 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 trial with Satan, he he does not coin his own phrases. He quotes scripture. Chiar și atunci când este ispitit de către diavol, Isus citează scriptura. And then he made that qualitative distinction between the word of God and the word of man. Apoi face această distinție caritativă între cuvântul uh, oamenilor și cuvântul lui Dumnezeu. And then Jesus said that he was going to appoint his apostles and at Pentecost the Holy Spirit would be poured out and would lead them into all truth so that what they wrote would be his inspired utterance. Păi Iisus a spus că îi va trimite pe apostoli și apoi la cinzecime Duhul Sfânt a fost revărsat asupra apostolilor și au fost călăuziți. So if Jesus said he was God and he rose from the dead, my view of Scripture should be Jesus' view of Scripture. So the next question is, uh, uh, on, on one hand, what is the Bible verse that is being used as a foundation for the Sola Scriptura principle? So where in the Bible mm-hmm. is Sola Scriptura firm? And a series of questions asking for references uh, from your quotes from the Church Father. So, Maybe we can uh, put them After, on, the, yeah. on the website yeah. uh, later and uh, you can just answer the question about the Bible. So. Sure. Uh, ce preștie referințe la părinți o să le punem pe, într-un articol pe, pe site uh, pentru că nu putem să uh, citim acum referințele, nu avem timp. 
Dar dacă urmăriți site-ul, o să punem în, în curând un articol. So, what are the Bible sure. verses? Well, here again, I, I would say uh, what I said earlier about what the doctrine itself means. It doesn't mean that we have to have a Bible verse for everything that we believe. It means we need to back up with Scripture everything that we say. So the doctrine of the Trinity would be a great example of that. But, as I said, uh, uh, um, you know, the church has historically argued, I think rightly, that uh, that that uh, the doctrine is so clearly taught in Scripture that it can't be denied. But you, there is no word Trinity in the Bible. So how would we argue it? How, how would we say that it's it clear? So it's completely clear. Well, there's only the Bible teaches there's only one God. We have all kinds of passages to support that. We also have a lot of passages that say that the Father is God. A lot of passages that say the Son is God. A lot of passages that say the Spirit is God. One God. Three persons. And you could even start with John's prologue. Uh, he, he, in the beginning, he was with God and was God. You can't be with somebody if you're the same person. But he is the same nature. So, uh, you know, the, I would say the same thing about sola scriptura, that uh, it, it is a testimony drawn from, from a lot of different passages for those points that I was making. The qualitative difference between the apostolic age and the consequent age, the inerrancy of scripture versus the fallibility of the church, uh, in, inspiration versus illumination. Uh, există mai multe texte în Noul Testament care vorbesc această distinție calitativă între, între Scriptură și restul uh, și diferența între inspirație și uh, iluminare. If you accept that the scriptures are God's inspired word. Dacă accepti că scripturile sunt cuvântul inspirat al lui Dumnezeu. And you're not willing to say the churches uh, the, the church's decisions are God's inspired word in the same way. If you're not willing to say that, then logically there is no other alternative than to say that the, 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 the texts and decisions that are inspired by God are normative. Atunci nu ne rămâne decât să spunem că acele texte și decizii inspirate de Dumnezeu sunt normative pentru biserică. The last, the last uh, set of questions. Uh, ultima întrebări. Uh, după 500 de ani de reformă, ce urmează? So, after 500 years of reformation, what comes next? <laughs> Another 500 years of reference. Uh, well, the church is always, there's a great slogan from the 16th century, the church reformed and always needing reformation by the word of God. We never as individuals or as churches get to a point where we can say, hey, we're doing fine now. Ca individ sau ca biserici, nu putem să ajungem într-o într situație în care, pur și simplu, uh, să fim mulțumiți cu modul în care... Uh, We have it right, they're all messed up. Noi suntem buni, ei sunt răi. So we're always in need of being reformed by the Word of God. And isn't it a wonderful thing to know 
there is a word of God that stands outside of the church to be able to lead the church into greater depths of understanding of truth. Semper reformanda. Semper reformanda is So the next, next question, uh, the is the Biblia adevărul însăși, însuși, sau doar uh, o mărturie de sese uh, So the, ne- the next question is, is the Bible truth itself or only a witness of truth? Hmm. Uh, it, it, this is the uh, question that comes down to whether Jesus Christ himself is the hypostatic word Uh, and the Bible then is only the witness to Jesus Christ. Uh, Jesus, the hypostatic word, said, your word is truth in his highly, high priestly prayer. Întrebarea se referă la o dilemă dacă doar Hristos întrupat este adevărul însuși. Uh, sau și Scriptura este adevărul, dar uh, Scriptura, uh, Isus, ca și cuvânt întrupat, spune uh, Tatălui, cuvântul tău este adevărul. If I, if I promised you uh, I would uh, that my son was going to come and give you a million dollars tomorrow, uh, that would be just as much It would, it would be my word, right? But my son is my image more than my, what I say is my image, but they're both my promise. And so uh, Jesus is God's word in a qualitatively unique way. He's God's word incarnate. Uh, he is God's word in person. But the scriptures are also God's word written. And so uh, when he says, your word is truth, and he appeals to scripture as uh, the last word, as the court of appeals, uh, he speaks of scripture being fulfilled. Uh, you know, it's according to the scriptures. Everything is according to the scriptures. We have that testimony that, that uh, even though the written scriptures are not the incarnate word, And, and do witness to the word. They do more than witness. They are actually breathed out by the Holy Spirit. And so uh, they're not just human witnesses to God's word. They are God's speech. 2 Timothy 2.16, 3.16, for example. Theonustos. That's, that's quite long. Uh... Sorry. <laughs> uh... Deci, doar pentru că Scriptura este, este cuvântul lui Dumnezeu în, în, într-un alt mod decât este Hristos ca și cuvânt întrupat, nu înseamnă că nu este uh, și Scriptura uh, cuvântul lui Dumnezeu și, și adevărul, după cum uh, o persoană care face o promisiune uh, și vorbește adevărul, ne, ne transmite, uh, ne oferă prin acea promisiune adevărul, la fel și în Scriptură, vedem, în, putem să privim la Scriptură ca fiind Last, last question. Ultima um, întrebare. În, în uh, protestantism sunt vreo 300 de denominații. De ce? Dacă toate au soa scriptură. So the next question is, in protestantism there are like 300 denominations. Why do we have this if we have soa scriptură? If only there were only 300, uh, 300 denominations, I think it's more like 300,000. Um, I don't think it's because of Sola Scriptura. I think it's because we are sinful, proud, arrogant, stubborn people. Uh, no, no. <laughs> nu e din cauza doctrinei sau a Scriptura, cât este din cauza faptului că suntem uh, oameni aroganți, păcătoși, uh, mândri. 
you know, the, in in some in some churches, of course, you could say, well, uh, look at all of the unity. Okay, I'll be specific. Look at the you know, Roman Catholic Church. Look at all of the, all of the unity there. And this is a real draw for a lot of people, especially raised in the wild and crazy world of Protestantism, uh, to be in a church where, where there's unity. The question is, is it unity around the truth or is it unity around an office? Um, Maybe. Multe, no. multe persoane crescute în, uh, într-un protestantism dezvinat și sălbatic s-ar putea să fie atrase de o aparentă unitate care există în, uh, în uh, grupări cum ar fi Biserica Romană Catolică, dar întrebarea pe care trebuie să ne opunem este uh, ce fel de unitate e aceea? Este unitate uh, în adevăr, în jurul adevărului, sau unitate, o unitate instituțională în cadrul unei sur, în jurul unei slujbe? I have Roman Catholic friends who teach in Catholic seminaries and, and uh, will sometimes say things like this, like one of them in particular recently said, I think that you could probably deny almost any cardinal doctrine in Christianity in the, the, the church today. The reality is different. For example, a friend who works as a professor, Roman Catholic, at the seminar, Uh, spunea că în cadrul bisericii poți să fii în cadrul bisericii și să negi orice doctrină majoră. Except for one. Cu excepția unei singure doctrine. The supremacy of the Pope. Supremația Pape. That's too high price to pay. E un preț prea mare de plătit. Just one doctrine that you, you believe this man is at the top of the ladder. Not the forgiveness of sins and the resurrection of the body and the life of the world to come. Because you don't have to believe or teach that to be a professor in many seminaries in America. But the one doctrine that the Pope is God's representative on earth. I'm not saying that it's the same, but what, what distinguishes that from a cult? Just accept this one truth that the, that the, the prophet or the apostle is is the the one sent from the lord but the good news is that the lord has sent his servant jesus and he is the head of the church and he still rules and reigns in his church through the ministry of flawed and fallible ministers Dumnezeu și Tatăl și-a trimis Mistul pe Pământ și este Fiul Său care încă conduce Biserica prin slujitori umani care sunt căzuți, dar El continuă să conducă, să slujească Biserica.